websites like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify are some of the popular e-commerce brands that make a lot of money every year by providing a platform for vendors to reach customers. A multi-vendor marketplace is very profitable because you don't necessarily need to own the product or handle fulfillment. You just need to create a place where sellers can meet buyers and you can make money through either transaction fees, paid subscriptions, or advertisements. But creating websites like these will involve serious work because there are just a lot of moving parts required to make the website function properly. And that is why in this video, I'm going to show you how to use WordPress to create a multi-vendor e-commerce marketplace that has all the functionalities a platform like this will need. Whether you are creating this website for yourself or for a client, by the end of this video, you will know exactly what to do to create a fully functional e-commerce marketplace where vendors can list their products and customers can visit to shop. And if you like this video, you can support this channel by hitting the thumbs up button. Also leave a comment below, I really appreciate that. And with all of that said, let's get started. To create a simple e-commerce website with WordPress where you will be the only one listing your products, the plugin that you need is WooCommerce. WooCommerce is a very popular WordPress plugin if you want your website to have e-commerce functionalities. But for the type of website that we want to create right now, where you could have a lot of vendors, create accounts, have their own dashboard and list their own products, the number one WordPress plugin that you can use to achieve that is Docker. Now I'm going to leave a link to this website in the description. Just click the first link in the description and that will bring you over to this page and you'll be able to follow everything that I'll show you in this tutorial step by step. So here you can see the best way to build any type of marketplace with WordPress. And if you scroll down here, you're going to see some very interesting stats about Dokkan and they have 99% customer satisfaction, over 1.8 million downloads and over 70,000 marketplaces have been created with Dokkan. And you can see it is 60% less expensive for you to build your own marketplace when using Dokkan. This plugin has been around for over seven years and they have great customer support as well. And if we scroll down to the Dokkan interface section, you are going to see that you as the admin of the website, you have your own unique dashboard and the same with the vendors, they'll have their own special dashboard, not the WordPress backend and customers will also have their own separate interface as well. So this plugin will give you all the functionalities you need for a multi-vendor e-commerce marketplace. So once again, click the first link in the description of this video, that will bring you over to this page. And what you just want to do is to click on get started now. And over here, you're going to see the different pricing plans that this plugin offers. First, they have the free forever plan. And this is good if you're just testing out your idea, you are not sure if your website is going to work or not, you can start with the free forever plan, which will also give you a lot of features. You can have unlimited vendors on your site. You have a front end vendor dashboard. You can also use reverse withdrawal, you get other management, vendor withdrawal system, store widgets, WordPress.org support. And if you click on see all features, it will bring you over here where you are going to see a full list of all the features you get from this plan. At the same time, they have a starter plan, which will allow you to create a full-featured multi-vendor marketplace. And this is $149 per year. And these are the features you are going to get, everything is free, and a lot of other extra features as well. And then there's a professional plan, the business plan, which is the most popular. This is about $500 a year. And this will allow you to create the ultimate and perfect multi-vendor store and then there's enterprise plan. Also, you have the option to get the lifetime package for each plan, which will save you 35% of the cost. This means you can just pay once and use it for the lifetime of your website. And you can see here that you have a 14 days money back guarantee. So if you buy any of these plans and you are not satisfied with what you get, you can ask for a refund and you're going to get 100% of your money back. So just pick the plan that works best for you and if you click on the buy now button, you can complete your payment and then download the plugin. Or if you want to go with a free version of this plugin for now, that's fine as well. Just click on download now and the plugin will be downloaded for you. Now, the next thing we need is the theme. So you can just come up here and click on themes. You can use any theme you want for your website, but they also have two different theme options for you that I think will be more compatible with the Docker plugin. So they have the free version and then they have the paid version, which is $99 a year. And there are also third party themes that will also work nicely with the plugin as well. But right now, let's just go with the free version of the theme. I'll click on details 
and then just download this thing. And once you are done downloading your theme, just open your WordPress dashboard where I have a brand new WordPress website. And you can see it is still using the default 2024 theme. But to get started, we need to install the plugin and the theme we just downloaded. So let's start with the theme. I'll come over to appearance and click on themes and then click on add new theme and then just go ahead and click on upload theme. Then click on choose file select the theme you downloaded and it should be in zip format so here is it i'll click on open and then just go ahead and click on install now the theme has been installed successfully so i'll just go ahead and activate right away and you can see now here we have our docker theme next let's install the plugin so i'll come back to plugins click on add new plugin and then just click on upload plugin just like with the theme select your plugin in zip format and then click open now just go ahead and install now the plugin has been installed successfully so i'll just go ahead and click activate plugin so our plugin is now active and because i got the business plan for this plugin i will need to install the core plugin itself to make it functional so i'll just go ahead and click on install now and after installing this plugin it is going to walk you through some simple setup steps if you don't want to do this now you can just click on return to dashboard We'll skip this step and maybe we'll do it later but we'll just go ahead and get it done right away so it says welcome to the world of Dokkan thanks for choosing Dokkan to power your online marketplace this quick setup wizard will help you configure the basic settings this setup wizard is completely optional and should not take more than three minutes if you choose to skip these steps you can always set up Dokkan manually or come back here and complete the setup via the wizard and also they said the WooCommerce plugin is necessary for Dokkan to work and it will be automatically installed if you've not installed it already. So let's just click on let's go to start the setup. Click the let's go button again. The first step in this setup process is to configure the settings for your store. Here you can define the vendor store URL and here's an example. It's going to be the domain name of your website slash what you have here and then the seller name. So let's say you want to use something else maybe like dashboard that's up to you. You could use account, store is fine, whichever one works best for you. Next, you have the shipping fee recipient. And this will depend on who is actually handling the shipping. If the vendors will handle their shipping, then you probably want to set it to vendor. But if you as the admin of the website will handle the shipping, then you might want to set it to admin, depending on the business model you are working with on your website. So let's say I want to use vendor so that once you place an order, the vendors are responsible for shipping the products to them and then you can select product tax fee recipient and this will depend on how your business is structured the location of your business and all those kind of stuff just select the one that is more appropriate shipping tax fee recipient select who will receive the shipping tax fee as well map source api i'm going to use google maps and then you need to get your google map api key if you want to show maps on your website and you can just click on this api key um, link right here then it will bring you over to this page with a simple guide that you can follow. I'm going to click on go to credentials page and then just click on create new project. Here I just give my project a name. Let me just use marketplace for instance and click on create. This is a brand new account so there are still some setup steps. I'll click on finish account setup. Select your country and then click agree and continue. You will need to set up your payment profile and the payment method you want to use. Don't worry, Google will not remove any money from your payment method. This is just for verification purpose. As you can see here, your card is used to verify that you are not a robot and it won't be charged until you manually upgrade to a paid account. So here I'm going to click on start with. Once you do all of that successfully, you are going to see your API key right here. So you can just copy and then paste it in the API field. Here you have the option to share essentials. That's if you want to help make Dokkan even more awesome, you can allow the Dokkan plugin to collect non-sensitive diagnostic data and usage information. So that's up to you. Then the types of products you want to sell, either physical product, digital product, or both. I'm going to check both and then click continue. The next section is selling setup. New vendor enables selling. If you check this, that means once a vendor registers on your platform, they can start selling their products right away. And if you turn this off, that means you will need to manually verify people who can sell or cannot sell on your platform. But I'll just turn this on because when you're just starting a business like this, 
You want to make it as easy as possible for people to hop on your platform and get started without any friction. Next is the commission type. This is how you want to make money as the website owner. You want to charge a percentage or a flat fee or even a combination of both. So if you use flat, that means you can set the amount you want to charge on every sale a vendor makes. If you use percentage, you can select the percent you want to take every time a vendor makes a sale. So let's say I want to use a combination of flat and percentage. How many percent do you want to charge? I'm going to use 3% and then the fixed fee, let's say this is going to be um, 5 cents. And then other status, do you want to allow vendors to change the other status? I'm going to turn this on and then click continue. The next section is withdraw setup. That is when vendors make sales and make money, on your platform how do you want them to withdraw and the like so first is a withdrawal method paypal is checked by default but let's say i want to use bank transfer only i'm going to turn bank transfer on then you can set a minimum withdrawal limit that means people have to make a certain amount before they'll be able to withdraw i'm going to put this at a hundred dollars vendors will need a minimum balance of hundred dollars before they can request a withdrawal and then other status for withdrawal usually you want the order to be completed before they can go ahead to withdraw the money but you also have the option to withdraw when the order is still processing that's up to you and then i'll just go ahead and click continue and this adjusts some plugin recommendations that will add extra features to your platform i'm going to take all of them and then click on continue your marketplace is ready now i'm going to click on visit.com dashboard so on the back end of your website, this is what your Dokkan dashboard will look like. So you basically get to see a summary of the net sales, commission, and the number of vendors that have signed up this month, you know, those awaiting approval, the number of products created, and the number of awaiting withdrawals that you have. And if you look at the menu here, you can see that you have different options. Withdraw, this is where you're going to see all the withdrawal requests um, that you have coming from vendors and also the reverse withdrawal request all the vendors that you have on your website you will see them right here and then in the announcement section you can add announcements to the platform you can see refund requests reports modules and these modules are basically a way for you to add more features and more functionalities to your website so if you want to add function integration this is a color scheme customizer that will allow you to customize the colors of um, your Dokkan dashboard. I'm going to check this. Also, delivery time. This will allow customers to choose the date and time for their delivery. This will be very helpful. And then Elementor for designing um, the look of the pages of your website. And then EU compliance field. You know, people who have the ability to follow stores, geolocation. There are more interesting modules like the live search to add a live product search to your marketplace. You know, this will allow you to set minimum and maximum quantities of order. I'm going to check this. PayPal Marketplace enables split payment, multi seller payment, and all those kind of stuff. Check this. Product add on, product advertising. That is, if you want to make money by allowing interested vendors to promote your product. Now, as your platform gets more attention, this one very good way you can make money for yourself because vendors will want more people to see their product and they can pay for that and then you set your product in the featured section and then you can enable product inquiry there are just a lot of them you also have rank mass seo for seo i'm going to check this and then i'm going to check this as well to let customers report abuse this is very important if you want to maintain a very healthy platform and then i also check request for quotation and let's see which one again store reviews store support um, i'll need all of that and then vendors should be able to see the analytics of their platform. Um, vendor product importer as well, an exporter. And then finally, I'm going to install vendor verification to verify sellers and then this wholesale option. And once I have all of this in place, I'll just go ahead, click on activate. All right, now we have 21 active modules. Now, some of these modules might not be available on the free plugin. I'm able to get access to all of these modules and enjoy these features because I have the business plan of the Dokkan plugin. So after modules, you have tools, then the help section and the settings if you need to customize or make any changes to all the configuration we did earlier 
you can do all of that from here. Under general settings, you can restrict admin area access. This will prevent vendors from accessing the WP admin dashboard area. Vendor store URL, we've done this earlier. Vendor setup wizard logo. Um, I'll just leave this blank and that will use my site title um, by default. And then the vendor setup wizard message, you can customize this message right here, whichever way you want it. And um, yeah, so there are more settings here that you can go through. Once you go through all of these settings, just click on save changes. And then you have the selling options, you know, with your options. These were all part of the configurations we did through the setup wizard. You can enable reverse withdrawal by checking this. Um, that's up to you. And then you can come over to page settings. Um, which page do you want to use as a dashboard? Which page for my orders? Which page for store listing? And the page for terms and conditions. Usually for this, you need to come over to pages and then create a terms and conditions page. And just click on add new page and then enter terms and conditions. Enter your website terms and conditions, click publish. And now I can just come over here, just refresh this page and then click select page. Here's the terms and conditions that we just created, select it and click save changes. And then you can come over to appearance. This is where you can get to customize how your store will look. If you want to show map on store page, you know, map source, we've already done that. And then you can enable Google recapture, show contact form on store page, um, store header template. Let's say I'm going to use um, this and then you can customize the store banner with the store banner height and all of this. Once you are done, click save changes. So you have all of these settings that you can go through the colors, live search, you know, store support. I'm going to display this on other details. Click save changes. And then you have seller verification. Which method do you want to use to verify sellers? Right? So this business and you want to take it very serious and you don't want customers to come on the platform and start getting bad experiences with sellers. So you can verify your sellers. If you have all of this checked, Dokkan will prompt them to connect their Facebook account, Twitter account, you know, Google and LinkedIn. And then verification systems and gateways you can select all of that here and customize the sender theme. Here you might want to use maybe your name or your business name and then the verification text. Then you can select the SMS gateway you want to use, either Vonage or Twilio. Um, that's up to you and you might need to go through some set of steps here. Let's say if you select to you for instance and select you need to enter the form number, the SID, the authentication token, you know, the code type and do all of that. You can also enable email verification. I'm going to check this. So there's a message that they'll get. You can customize it and then this also the login notice. I'll click save changes. Now the next that we have is social API. I'm going to enable this so that people can log in to any of their social media accounts and then shipping status i'm going to turn on allow shipment tracking and then you can select the shipping providers you want to use on your site then um, code settings this is if you want to allow customers to send codes on selected products and then wholesale settings for wholesale sales eu compliance fields you know delivery time here i'll just allow vendors to be able to set the delivery time depending on how they want to make their business and then you can also set delivery days you know select the days and then the time when um, delivery will be open and then product advertising you can set the number of available slots and then the number of days the ad will take and then vendors can purchase advertisement that's checked and then the cost you can enter the price here depending on how big your platform is and then if you want to enable advertisement in subscription but no i don't want that and then mark advertised product as featured. Yeah, that's how you will show it to more people. And then display advertised product on top. And then out of stock visibility, just so that customers will get to know. Click on save changes. Next, you have the geo location settings. Where do you want to position the map? Is it at the top, left, or right? You know, show map on, let's say I'm going to use shop page. And then show filters before. Um, location map here you have all of these other settings and in case the search store is not found the default location you want to set on the map let's say i want to use um, lagos for instance please save changes 
Now we have product report abuse. I'm going to check reported by. This means only logged in users can report. And then you can enter the reasons um, that people can report an abuse here. And also vendor analytics. This will basically allow vendors on your platform to get more insight into how their business is performing. And to do this, you need to connect your Google tracking ID. Once you are done, click on save changes. So these are the basic settings you need to do for this plugin. Next, we need to make some settings with WooCommerce. But before we do that, let's have a quick preview of what our website is currently looking like. So this is what we had before. I just refresh this page. And this is what the website looks like right now. In a moment, I'm going to show you how to use Elementor to make your website look more beautiful than this. Well, here you can see that we already have some functionalities. Here's a cart. Vendors have their own separate dashboard. If I come back to vendor dashboard and click on visit your store, vendors will be able to see their store right here. And if I click on dashboard, this is what the vendor's dashboard will look like. We're going to customize all of this as well. Inside their dashboard, vendors will be able to see the amount of sales they have made, you know, the earnings, page view, order, and they have all of these tools that they can use for their business. Coupons, reports, delivery time, reviews, you know, number of followers they have, if they have announcements to make on their store. But you can see right now, there's an error saying your account is not enabled for selling. And to fix this, I'll come over to our dashboard and then come over to vendors. And this is the vendor account right here. I'll click on edit and then just scroll down. Here we have enable selling and then I'll also enable publish product directly and then click on save changes. Although after now, vendors will automatically start selling because remember we changed the setting earlier. So let's come back here again and just refresh. So you can see that now the error is gone. Right now, I want to change the layout of this page because you can see that the menu does not have enough space and we don't really need um, this sidebar right here. So to do that, I'll click on customize. Here, just come over to sidebars and then layout settings. And um, I'll probably just use no sidebar for all the different sections of the website. Or if you want a different sidebar section, that's up to you. And then I'll just click publish. All right, we'll leave the customizer for now. We might come back later where you can see that now um, the vendor dashboard is looking kind of better. And this is one thing I like about this plugin because vendors will not use a WordPress backend. They have their own backend built into the platform. Also, you as an admin, you have your own account right here, which will look different from what the vendors have. Now, we need to design our website so that we can get a nice looking website. This is not the type of website you would want to take to the market. But before we go ahead to do that, let me add some demo product to WooCommerce so that we'll have um, something to work with. So um, come back to WooCommerce. For now, I'm going to skip the setup. Now, since this Docker plugin is designed to work with WooCommerce, WooCommerce is the plugin that will handle our payment and some other settings. So you can come back to settings. Here you can add your store address. You can also touch the product settings. Shipping, Dokkan is going to handle the shipping um, configurations for us. And then you have payments. This is where you can get to set the payment method customers are going to use to pay for products on your website. So some of the options I have here by default are Woo payments, direct bank transfer, check payments, cash on delivery, and the Dokkan PayPal marketplace. Remember the module we added. And you can set all of this up and if you want to use a separate payment gateway that's not here right now, let's say you want to use Stripe, or if you're in Nigeria, you want to use Paystack or Flutterwave, you can just get the plugins for that. These payment platforms have WooCommerce plugins that you can install. Also, you can come over to emails. This way you can configure the emails your website are going to be sending out for different actions, right? So Docker new support ticket, Docker reply support ticket, there are just a lot of them, so you can set all of this up. And the good thing is, I've made a full video covering how to correctly send emails from your WordPress WooCommerce website directly to your customer's inbox. Because by default, all of these email templates are not going to be working. There are some set of steps you need to follow in order for these emails to start working. So I'm going to link that video in the description. You can check it out after watching this video. And then after emails, you might want to come over to advanced 
and this way you can get to set the cart page, the checkout page, my account page, and all of these other settings. And once you are done with all of these, you can just click on save changes. Now let's come back to products. Let's upload some demo products that we're going to work with. Here we have the product advertisement payment. This is here by default because of the advertisement module we added to our Docker plugin. So you don't actually need to touch this. To add new products, you can click on add new or you can import from a CSV file. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll click on choose file. After selecting my product file, I'll just click continue. Here you just want to check to make sure that WordPress is accurately mapping the CSV fields that you have. And once everything is in place, you can just go ahead and click on run the importer. It's importing the product that I have now. I just need to import this demo product so that we have something to work with when designing our website. But in the real world, your vendors will be the ones uploading their product for themselves. And the import is complete. I can just go ahead and click on view products. And you can see that we have all the products right here. At this stage, let's go ahead and give our website a very nice look. So here, what we have right now is very basic. First, you are going to notice that our website is still using the default Dockan color. So to change the color, you can just come over to the Dockan settings and then colors. Then you can select out of any of this color template or you can create your own custom color palette. For now, let me just use, um, let's say this for instance, summer splash and click save changes. Now let's refresh the vendors dashboard, let's see. And you can see now we have a different color. I don't really like this color, so I'm going to pick something else. Let's say this, let's try this and see how it is going to look. Okay. Let's try Petal Party. Ideally, you would want to create your own custom color palette, but I don't want to make this video too long. Um, that's what I'm trying to use from one of the templates. And let's just stick with this for now. Now let's go ahead and create a Copa homepage for our website. So uh, come back to our WordPress dashboard, then um, come back to pages. First, let me even install the plugin we are going to use to build our page, which is Elementor. So just come back to plugins and then click on add new. And then you just want to go ahead and install Elementor website builder. Now, after getting Elementor, I am going to get another plugin that will serve as an add-on to Elementor. Now, there are a lot of them. You can see Elementor header and footer builder, real Elementor add-ons and templates, essential add-ons for Elementor. And what plugins like these do basically is to give you some extra features that might not be available on the free version of Elementor. Let's say, for example, if you want to edit the header and the footer of your website using the Elementor page builder, that will not be available on the free version of Elementor. So in that case, you might want to get this add-on, Elementor header and footer builder. And you can see these kind of plugins are very popular. This has over 1 million active installations. So I'm going to get two of them right now. And the first is Royal Elementor add-ons. You are going to see why in a moment. And the second add-on I'm going to get is Elements Kit. Uh, this is very popular as well, over 1 million active installations. And let me just add the header and footer builder just in case I might want to edit um, the header menu and the footer menu of my website. After installing these plugins, let's just go ahead and activate all four of them. So first I'll activate Elementor and then activate the header footer builder, Elements Kit and Royal Elementor Addons. Um, just keep this. And with all of these plugins in place, we are now ready to start building the different pages that we need on our website. So I'll just come over to pages. Here you notice that there are some default pages from WooCommerce and Dockan. And if you need some extra pages, let's say about page, home page, blog page, and the likes, you can just create those pages for yourself. So out of this, we will not really need the sample page. So I'm going to trash this. And um, every other one here will be useful. So let's create a new page that we're going to use as the home page of our website. For the title of the page, I'll just use home. And then I'll come over here to where you have templates. And I want to use Elementor full width. And then just go ahead and publish this page. 
After publishing, now I'm going to click Edit with Elementor. The way you decide to structure your homepage entirely depends on you and how you want your website to look. And the good thing is Elementor gives you the flexibility and all the tools to create any type of design you want for your pages. But right now I'm going to create something very simple, not to spend a lot of time doing this. So to start, I'll just bring in a single column section and I'm going to add a background image to the section. So just select the section and then come over to style and then background type, I'm going to use classic and then add an image right here. Let's say this is the image I want to use, bring it in. So the exit, I'll need to increase the height a little bit. I'll come back to layout and then just play around with the minimum height. Let's just use 300 pixels and then come back to styling again and then display size, I'm going to use contain. Um, let's say no repeat. Okay, that's not looking too good. So I'll just use cover and that's all I have. Then you could add a background overlay. Let me just use um, something dark but reduce the opacity a little bit let's just say somewhere in the middle I think this would do and then the next thing I'm going to do is to add some text that will be the main message of our platform basically then I'm going to use alright so this is what I have number one P2P marketplace to shop or sell the best bags just enter whatever you want your platform to be known for and the website I have here I'm assuming that we are focusing on just bags because usually if you want to create a platform like this you want to find a niche for yourself maybe your website will be focused on cars gym products kitchen wares and all those kind of stuff because if you just create a general marketplace that means your website will be competing with marketplaces like Amazon which will make it very difficult for you to get people's attention that is why it is better to create a niche marketplace so that you know who your target audience is and then people know what they are coming to your website for. So I'm going to style this text a little bit. I'll just um, center align the text and then for the color, I'll just use white. I think that will do. And then typography, I'm going to use Oswald as um, the font family and then just increase the font size a little bit so let's say 55 pixels and then the font weight I'm going to use 700 and um, I think those are the basic settings I'm going to do here but feel free to customize um, yours whichever way you want it you'll notice that this text will be better to we'll have it in the middle of um, this section so to do that select the section again and then under layout just come over and justify center and I think that will do it and I can just update this. The next thing I'm going to bring in another section and here I'm going to add a side box so that once we've come to the website since there will be a lot of products it will be very useful if people can just go straight to the point and search for what they are looking for and that's why websites like Amazon have the side box at the very top of the home page. So to add my search box come over here and then in the widget, just type search. And then you are going to see this search widget from Royal Elemental Addons that we installed. I'm going to use this because this is one search widget that is really, really good. So I'm going to enable um, IR search and then um, open link in new tab, you know, show, th show thumbnails, and then um, probably exclude results that thumbnail. And then I also add show view result button. Then um, let's see what else we can do here. Description, number of words, you know, place order, um, search. I'm going to, just going to use search products. And um, okay, let's see. After setting all of these parameters, you can come back to style. Here you can get to style, you know, the input text, the button. Let's see if you want to change the color of the button. You can do that right here. You can also change the width of the button. And if you click on AX, you can also, you know, you have all of these options that you can use to customize uh, this side box. But I'm just going to leave it the way it is right now. Just increase the height of the section a little bit to let's say um, 150 pixels. And then I'm going to justify a content center. I think that's nice. 
Now, I'm going to bring in one last section for the home page. And this section is going to have some products. So let's come over here. And under widgets, just type in Wu, right? So um, this is what we need. Wu grid slider carousel. I'm going to drag this in. And you can see this widget is also from the Royal um, Elemental add-on that we installed. And you can see here, people are going to see some products um, straight away. And then they can also switch between the different categories that we have, you know, and that's super nice. So just go ahead and make all the changes you want to make. And if you want to style, you know, this section, you can do that as well. Come over to style and apply all the different stylings that you want to add. But let me just update this for now. And let's see what our homepage looks like at the moment. Now, visitors can come over to our website and then just type in, you know, the product that they're looking for. And they're going to see some search results. They can click on the one they want. And they'll see more details. They can go ahead and click on add to cart or get support, whichever one. And this is super nice. But you can see that this page is not yet the home page of our website. So to set the page that we just created with Elementor as our website home page, just click on customize and then come over to home page settings. And then by default, it is on your latest post, but I want to use a static page and then select the page, which is going to be home. That's the name we gave the page. And then just go ahead and click on publish. All right, this is looking good. Now there are still some stuff that you might want to do. Let's say you might want to add the top menu, the primary menu. Also, we've not done anything um, here at the footer yet. So to add the top menu, click on add top menu and then create the menu. Let me just use top menu as a name. And then here we have menu settings. I'm going to check top menu. That's so that we can assign this menu I'm about to create as the top menu, which is going to show up right here. Click on create menu. And then you can bring in the stuff that you want to add to this menu. Let's say for instance, I'm going to use um, let's see my account Add to the menu and let's save this and see Refresh this page and you can see we have the my account widget right there and You can feel free to style it. Um, so it looks better. But I'll just proceed to the primary menu so let me name this primary menu and um, For the items on the menu, let me just come over to WooCommerce endpoints and then use downloads and then maybe add the wishlist button and then click on add to menu. Now let's save this and see what we have at the moment. All right, so you can see the two buttons right there. Now let's go down to the footer and you are going to notice that there's not enough gap between you know this section and the footer so i'm just going to click edit with elementor and then just search for spacer this will allow you to add space between sections and elements and i'm going to make this maybe 100 pixels click update now let's visit the page again yeah i think this is looking better and to edit the footer you can see the instructions here replace this widget content by going to appearance widget and dragging the widget you need into these areas. So remove or choose number of footer widget, go to appearance, customize layout, and footer widget. So um, that basically means come over to your WordPress dashboard and then under appearance, click on widgets. You're going to see the different widgets that you have here. And these are the footer widgets. Footer widget one, two, three, four, and five. So let's say I want to add the logo of this platform um, in the first widget section which is a very common thing for websites to do. I'll come over here, under footer widget one, click on add. Right now, I don't have the logo, so I'm just going to bring in a heading text and then just type in, um, you know, this text I'll have here, multi-vendor marketplace. And then let's update this and see what it is going to look like, refresh. All right, so you can see that right here. Then maybe under widget two, I'm going to add, let's say one of the menus that we have. For the title, I'm going to use menu 
and then select primary menu click update all right let's refresh this you can see that right here the two menu options i'll have on our primary menu we'll have them right here and then you can go ahead and let's say here we want to add the links to our social media platforms convert to widget 3 and then search for social icons and then you can just go ahead and add the links let's say facebook enter the url to your facebook page um, next let's say twitter and then maybe youtube all right um, let's just use this three for now all right now i'm going to update and let's refresh this page again all right so you see the social media icons let me just add a title let's say i'm going to use socials as a title and then click update all right so refresh again and you can see this looking so nice and let's say i don't need the fourth footer widget for example i'll come back to the customizer and then footer footer widget and let's just change the number to three now you have the options to you know change the background color the text color and all of that or you could even use the elemental add-on that we installed earlier to create a nice looking footer and um, you know header for your website if you don't want to use something as simple as this so now we have our website coming together let me go over to the dashboard the vendor dashboard and let's say I want to add a new product as a vendor. I'll come back to products. Okay, we get an error 404. And 404 error simply means the page that this URL is directing to is not available. So to try to fix this, let's come over to our WordPress dashboard and go to Docker settings again. And what I'm going to do, I'll come back to general and then just change the store URL from dashboard to, let's say, um maybe account that might work click on save changes let's check if this is working now so come over to dashboard and then click on products now the vendors can see all the products that they have and then let's say they want to add a new product they can click on add new product import or export product and then under the orders they can get to their orders request quotes you know and all of this kind of stuff and with this we have a website where vendors can list their product and then customers can come over and buy those products. I hope you found this video helpful. And just in case I miss any step in the process of making this website, let me know in the comment section. Or if there's anything you want me to talk about in my next video, let me know in the comment section as well. And that's basically it for this video. I hope you got value watching this video. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. I'll be there answering your questions. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.